Well, welcome to Get You To Done Now podcast series. I am Majesty Alan Nicole Wow and the creator of the Wow To Panure Factor Evolution. And I'm excited uh, for this segment. And I have my star Empress Celebrity Panure uh, joining me, Gina Gardner. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, where this particular um, segment is going to go today. So, uh, Gina, thank you always for being here with me uh, for this particular podcast series. You come off mute. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So always, you know, we um, like to leave the space open in terms of where this can um, go and develop uh, as core themes arise, uh, as we um, seek to serve others so that they can get YouTube done, but not just get YouTube done, get YouTube done now, because that's what this uh, series is all about, people getting into action and staying consistent um, with it. So yeah, I know you're ready to get started, right? I am indeed. Okay, great, 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 great. So has anything been coming up uh, for you uh, more recent? Anything that you've been uh, witnessing uh, or so? Um, or would you like to just start off by just talking about the importance of getting YouTube done? Well, like anything, unless you get started, you're never going to go anywhere. It's like having a car that's got no engine. Mm -hmm. And YouTube is no different. But I think for many people, they, they want it to be perfect before they get started or they want it um, to feel completely confident about every bit of technology before they get started. And so they just don't get started at all. For me, the focus this last week has been on lumens and creating, mm -hmm. um, using lumens that I'd already made um, and using those in a different way, repurposing them and making new lumens. Um, and I'm just now I'm ready I've started scheduling those uh, and I've got about 20 that will be ready to be scheduled over the next month or so oh that's great that's great and and I've actually been um, leveraging Lumen 5s uh, more as well and so since we're kind of talking about that already would you like to tell a little bit about Lumen 5 in case some have not um, heard some of the other segments or even familiar with that software it's a piece of software. There is a free version and you can make a certain number of these during your uh, within the free um, uh, account during the month. It's not very expensive. And if um, you want to put your own logo in rather than finishing with their logo, it's worth uh, purchasing the um, the professional, the low level professional um, subscription. It isn't very much money. It's very helpful in the fact that you can take a post that you put on LinkedIn or Facebook, you can drop it into the software and it will automatically generate you a video. Um, and the video is made up of, um, of still pictures and very tiny videos um, that takes the essence of your um, article um, and puts it into anything from 50 seconds to about five minutes video. It then provides you with music or with the option that you can speak over it. I tend to use it differently now where I used to use it just to repurpose um, post before. I look at what do I want to say? What are the things that I want on each slide? And then I, I choose the slides myself, which takes a bit longer, but it's what I like to do. You can do it either way. What I've started to do with them is to create um, YouTube shorts. So that's uh, lumens that are designed to be under a minute. Now, where I was repurposing, I found that some of them were, if I wanted them to make the sense that I wanted them to make, were one minute, 12 seconds, or when one minute, 30 seconds. And so they become short YouTubes rather than YouTube shorts. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a mixture. But you can use them um, straight from Lumen. You can actually publish them on Facebook, Twitter, on LinkedIn and several other platforms. Um, and then you can load them up onto YouTube. If you use Vimeo, you can load them onto Vimeo. And they're a very useful way of catching people's attention because there is no doubt that video um, catches more attention than an article these days. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing that and setting up um, 
you know, with that to tell what Lumen 5 is, because Lumen 5 is tremendous. And I love um, leveraging that software for various things, but especially using it to create videos for YouTube and and um, more recently even doing more YouTube shorts with those. And I find those to be um, more effective um, than some of the traditional videos I had been making previously. And obviously because YouTube Shorts is the big thing right now. And, and of course, if you position them at the right time on your platform, then it's this tremendous in terms of visibility and also leveraging those to, you know, to segue to uh, some of the, um, you know, your longer videos. So I just want to bring up that, you know, Gina was mentioning in terms of her starting to use Lumen 5 for YouTube Shorts as well. Now, I just want to say for those of you who aren't familiar with YouTube Shorts, um, those are uh, vertical videos that are anywhere, you know, we're really 60 seconds or less. And um, the power of leveraging um, the shorts is, is just tremendous. It's something that we chronically talk about. So you hear us um, do some overlap and, and talk a lot about certain um, concepts and methods uh, that are really, really helpful. And it's a reason why we have richness with redundancy as it relates you know, to um, certain things that we share. We're for one, Anytime people are learning too, they need to take in information um, that is somewhat the same, a little bit more frequently than, oh, I heard this, I'm moving on, especially if they haven't implemented it. And then also too, people come in at different times to learn different things you know, from this series, but also it just doesn't hurt to hear certain things over and over so that it's ingrained in you, so it is a part of you. It's just part of the building blocks of the fundamentals. And, and also, too, we know, Gina, that um, there are times where people are implementing things and then they actually go away and then they get reminded of something and then they come back to doing it. So I just wanted to just, you know, just emphasize that, that we definitely talk a lot about Lumen 5 software and the power of leveraging um, YouTube shorts, <laughs> for sure. There are other ways to use them, of course, if you've got yes, lots of course. photographs, you can actually use your own photographs and upload them. You can upload your own music. Um, I'd say go and explore it and explore the free one. It costs you nothing to do that right. um, and see its potential and then decide if it's for you and you want to, to buy the next, you know, the first level subscription. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's great advice. And and as you were mentioning earlier about using um post content and repurposing it. And, you know, we've talked a lot too about using your articles and blog posts too, um, to do excerpts, you know, from there and then use that software as you're creating your, um, your video, use it to segue people to your longer content or so, so that, you know, so that's very, very important. And the power of using YouTube for this is, it really is tremendous can't emphasize that enough. And so Gina, let's talk more about the, the get it done, um, you know, aspect. And if there's any other major or even minor subject topics that you want to talk mm -hmm. about, I know at one point you mentioned something about technology or talking about um, <laughs> that, but anything else mm -hmm. that you want to talk about, we can so that we can serve people and give them just um a generalization of areas that they can really start getting YouTube done because it is more than just, oh, let me get content and post. You know, there may be things that people actually need to learn about YouTube and that's getting YouTube done as well, the education part. So yeah, so let's let's hear anything that you want to talk about around that. So most people that I know that are in business think that the only way to use YouTube is to have a video about what you do about your business and there is a huge value that you can add through using youtube to um, either um, identify what your products are what your publications are who you are and what you do however one of the things that i've learned by doing um things in the way that that ali nicole has been suggesting is to actually broaden that out to the whole of my life 
Yeah. And so particularly with YouTube shorts and short YouTube videos, the difference being YouTube shorts, less than a minute, short videos between 59 seconds and about three minutes, four minutes, is I've incorporated lots of areas of my life. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, I think two things have happened. One is that I've got many more subscribers because I have reached audiences that otherwise would have not been um, available to me because what I am directly doing isn't necessarily on their radar. But as they get to know you and know your interests and start to trust that you're going to turn up because you have to be consistent about this, they then start to trust you and start to talk about you. Mm -hmm. And so then go and, and uh, you know, what you will find is that people then go and look for you on LinkedIn or on Facebook. So there becomes this coordinated um, mm -hmm. view of you. It's not uh, a one size fits all. And the business of getting it done, I think so many of us procrastinate when it's something new and we're a bit nervous. And so initially I just went through my phone and I looked at videos of my holidays, of my pet, of my friends, animals that I have um, contact with. And I uploaded those as YouTube shorts. And there is a facility on your phone when you upload them for YouTube itself to tailor them into a short. And they'll just take the first 50 six to 59 seconds and so there'll be lots of things I have no doubt that you already have on your phone that you can very easily load up and I I I set myself the task of doing that I had 69 videos that initially that I thought was suitable and I just uploaded them onto YouTube and then I went back later and put in things like hashtags and descriptions and links to other things and those can be scheduled. You can let them go off straight away or you can schedule them months ahead. Mm -hmm. And so I set aside a Saturday where I was going to upload them. And during the rest of that weekend, I did the backroom work. And I have videos um, that are now going to take me all the way up to Easter. Now, I'll add other ones, but I've got an infrastructure mm -hmm. of something going out at least every day. Yes. The yes. other thing about doing it that way is I, as I did things which had similar themes, so I would cre create for me a bank of um, hashtags, for example, and I created a description of who I am, what I do and the links. So that goes on to every video. So a lot of it now is cut and paste rather mm -hmm. than having to create from scratch all the time, which Absolutely. means that it can get quicker and quicker at it. Some mm -hmm. people find set an hour aside a day and do it or however often. I just find it suits me better to put a chunk of time in a day so that I, I get into the rhythm of it and then I don't touch it for a week or a fortnight. You have to do what's suitable for you. But because I can pre-schedule them, nobody would know whether I'd done them on the day or I'd done them weeks in advance. That's right. That's right. So, you know, now you brought that up and I'm so glad that you shared that. So let's talk about this because this is what I call having your base content bank. And so it's like you talked about having a bank of content. And, and this is the great thing about getting YouTube done and actually getting your base content. Your base content is that sort of consistent, um, the consistency, the content that's going to broadcast, um, whether you're showing up there, like Gina mentioned, um, manually putting it in or not. These are pre-scheduled um, videos that you have. And this is why it's good to have a multi-interest type of focus because that has consistent content of a variety that's going out. And so a lot of times people, and you know this, Gina, um, even content creators, avid content creators, they struggle with creating content and sometimes yeah. you know, they get content block or, or so. But when you are just leveraging the whole of your experience, you never run out of content. And then also too, you learn how to be resourceful in terms of repurposing certain mm -hmm. content by taking a video that pre-exists and actually creating a different version of that video 
and then having it pre-scheduled. And you can do that even with whether it's um, YouTube Shorts or Lumen and even some of your your regular um, traditional videos. It's just that that part takes a little bit more work uh, to do where versus when you're creating like YouTube Shorts, you have those in your phone and you can create a variety um, of different um, versions of it because you can shorten some or you can leave them the same and add uh, text or filters and then you can pre-schedule um, those to to post at different times so an example of this is like let's say that you have a book you have a publication um, and and I'm going to say this not even if you're not a published author um, but you have books that you read books that you like so you can take several books that you like that you would recommend and you can do videos of those books and maybe even open up a page and read, you know, from um, the publication or so or just a thought around that. And so if you have several books and you take time to actually do some filming, um, you know, just short form videos or or the YouTube short versions. Just imagine how you can have that scheduled out. So if you have, okay, this is uh, my recommended book of the month or my recommended book of the week or so, just depends on how many books that you have. You can then pre-schedule those. Those are based con base content that you can have in your bank and that produces something that's regular for your channel um, for you to show up like that. You can do it as a series. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that, well, I don't have like 12 books or so that I can put one for every month of the year. Well, no, you can just do it as a series and it can be maybe like a four week series. If you have four books, then it's just, you know, um, a book a week, or maybe it is the, the book of the month and you're recommending that people read that. And, and then you maybe provide some commentary around it. Maybe you show up, you know, with another follow-up video in terms of if you all read this book or, or however, whatnot, but these are things that can build um, base content. And so also something when Gina was talking about, she went through her phone and she's got a variety of different um, outings and holidays, um, just events, different, you know, um, things that she already had on her phone, friends content and, and film and things. So you can be thinking about those things and, and taking time to actually start doing some filming with your phone. If you, let's say you don't have content in your phone, you don't have video, so to speak. That's another form of getting YouTube done and focusing on creating your uh, base content bank. And then you can be focusing more on um, some of the other main things. Um, Gina, would you agree? I think absolutely. Ultimately, it's so much easier to move forward from um, a situation where there is some momentum. Right. In that right. first instance, the feeling that I've got to get started and I don't quite know what I'm doing can feel very uncomfortable and we get stuck in that misnomer we call a comfort zone which actually is very <laughs> yeah. often uncomfortable it's uncomfortable exactly right but it's familiar and I think part of this is being brave and it doesn't have to be perfect and I would say to anyone go and look at our sites you'll find the details in in the um description but my site genuinely you with Gina Gardner I am not holding it up as an example of something that's perfect. I am holding it up as a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And as I learn, so I'm refining what I do. And some of the uh, videos that are on there have been professionally um, filmed. And you can tell that there's a big difference between those and doing them in front of my sign here in my garden room. Um, but ultimately, the content is just as valuable, whether or not right. it's a bright, shiny uh, studio where it's been done, or whether it's me on my phone, just talking into my phone and saying, you know, have you thought about what about this? Or here's a bit of, of advice, you know, that, that you might find helpful. From the listener's point of view, the content is what's important. Don't get held up with all the folder rolls and it having to be perfect lighting and perfect this and perfect that. Good enough. And then you can always go back and refine. Mm -hmm. And inevitably, like anything, the more you do it, 
the better you'll get if you're prepared to learn as you go along. Oh, absolutely. And I want to jump in and say this, and that was perfect, um, Gina, and I'm so glad that you said that. We also want to address those who um, have been doing YouTube and not mm -hmm. just people who are, you know, sort of getting started with it because people who have channels, they struggle too. They they struggle um they get started and then they have some success and then they kind of go away from it because it's this um, kind of system they bought into that they have to be on YouTube a certain way. And then if they can't be on YouTube a certain way, then it's just like they just don't do it. But uh, a lot of people aren't leveraging the uh, pre-scheduling advantage and also being able to come up with base content that is different from their, you know, traditional uh, content. And so I just want to say to those of you who um, are either restarting with YouTube or you have a YouTube channel, you've kind of put it down for a little bit, or you just kind of, it's kind of a slow thing, you know, for you at this point is, is definitely take time out to um, start building up your content uh, bank uh, and having that base content and and not being so married, so to speak, to what you think your channel is primarily about or, and what you even feature your channel to be about. Yes, it, it can be about that, but your base content can be some of the other aspects and elements of your personal branding that then you marry that with your professional branding. So that's, that's something else, Gina, you know, that we, we've we been talking about mm -hmm. this, but I just want to clarify it a little bit more, is that, yeah, your your base content doesn't always necessarily have to be no. the content that you are, you know, producing for your, your kind of main thing. You just want to be able to have something that is um, is very consistent for um, for your audience with diversity, but also um, the algorithm trustability, so to speak, with you know with YouTube. But you actually want to be able to draw other people into your channel um, with who have an interest in a variety of things, just versus what you think your main focus is. Because Gina, you hear me talk about this often. We are all multi-interest beings. And yes. so even though people build a channel that is primarily focused on their core concept or their niche or so, however, but they, they're forgetting that, but people are people and people have a variety of interests and they don't only just have an interest in um, just the one thing that your channel provides. That's just what you're providing. But guess what? They're on other people's channels for something else, but you can have um, a one-stop shop type of uh, channel for certain things where people are more so on your channel. So even during the times where you aren't posting um, what is your main theme of the channel, you still have other things that are interesting to them that they'll come to your channel for, or you can use those to segue them to something else that you do. So Gina, you know, you want to talk a little bit more about that, or would you like to go in a different direction now? Uh, I think uh, there is no doubt that when you start to broaden out what you offer, you will also broaden out the audience that's mm -hmm. watching. And inevitably, people watch YouTube for all sorts of reasons. A lot of people perhaps go on there to look um, for things in their personal time. And they wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. go and my work is all about empowerment and transformational leadership. And and you know profitable uh, business leaders for example well they may not want to look at that in the evening but they may have a particular thing about cats or dogs or mm -hmm. travel and then when they come onto the site they will see well you also do leadership stuff and you also do stuff for empaths and you also do this and so they're drawn in so the the video that brings them in isn't necessarily the video that will keep them there. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's just opening a door. The other thing on a different track that I wanted to, to just mention, yeah. the scheduling is really useful. And one of the things that I did quite early on is I don't like to put 
to create something that's going to to give me a headache in terms of being consistent because one of the things that I'm very clear about is it's the consistent actions taken which are much more effective than the grand gesture so you talked about people um using YouTube and getting tired that often they go in with the grand gesture but they don't mm -hmm. create something that they can do consistently right so one of the things that I will do so that Saturday morning when I I, I um I actually um fed 69 short videos into YouTube I hadn't done the hashtags I hadn't done um the descriptions or any links so I didn't schedule them I just left them as private until I could go in on a, a, a separate day and go and do all the background work. And then I scheduled them so that they were consistent. Mm -hmm. So you left them in draft. Right? I left them in uh, um, the, just on public. Well, uh, private is is the, um, uh, the the three categories are private, public with a link um, or, or that they're published and they're open to anybody. And I just left them as private until I was ready for them to be seen because I'd topped and tailed them and done all of the other mm -hmm. things. So you can, I think it's about making this technology work for you. Yeah. Be definitely. the dog and use it as the tail rather than <laughs> right. it being the thing that, that directs everything that you've got to right. do. Right. And get organized. And, you know, if you get mm -hmm. yourself organized and Pat spend you know, a couple of weeks getting yourself organized. And I like to be ahead. So I don't like to be um, really uh, constantly flying by the seat of my pants to to reach the deadlines that I set myself or the things that I want to do. So I like to be ahead and then have the comfort of knowing that if I want to take a couple of days or want to, something else crops up, that I'm, I'm not losing the momentum of posting right. on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Well stated. Well stated. Yes. And very important to bring that out for sure. Um, and you know how they say consistency is key, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and it is. And doing the, I, well, I don't like to really put things so much in the category of right or wrong, so to speak. It's just that there are better ways to do things. And and I think that when we get in and we're doing the the laboratory um, for YouTube and the experiment, we learn how to, um, the better and best ways, you know, to do things. And the reason why I bring that up is because though consistency is key, there, there also needs to be um, some level of accuracy that's built in, that's measurable, mm -hmm. because it's not just, well, oh, I'm consistent, but I'm consistent. I'm not really seeing anything happen, but I'm being consistent. And yes, there are times where it does take some time for things to build, but you'll learn the right, um, the accurate way to show up. And also too, something I want to bring up is that you also have to be intuitive with this as well, because one of the things that I know in terms of even with the scheduling, um, and there are times where I actually give pause with my scheduling so I can get kind of a good feel in terms of where the algorithms are shifting mm -hmm. um, so that because there are times where if I just continue to do it at the times that uh, I normally do it, then I could not um, be, um, you know, in sync with the algorithms and it's like content just posting, but is anybody really seeing it just because I have it scheduled? So that's, you know, things that you have to think about too. And this comes, um, and before we get ready to close, I definitely wanted to emphasize this. Um, this is why it is important too, to stay on top of what's going on with YouTube and learn um, things about YouTube other than just, okay, I've learned how to post, I've learned how to schedule, I've got some things done. You also have to be in sync with what's actually going on. So sometimes you can learn about that. Of course, there's other experts on YouTube who that's kind of their specific thing that they keep up with kind of the timings and the algorithm. So you can learn, you know, different things uh, mm -hmm. about that. So that's the thing is that when getting YouTube done, you have to um, know what areas you need to focus on. So like today, you know, we've talked about a variety of different um, areas, which we try to cover, um, you know, in this series, mm -hmm. at least the first initial um, segments, we want to cover kind of a variety so that people can find their place, but also know that 
or when I, if I complete this, I have something else to consider to move on. So we've talked about, you know, software to use and scheduling, um, just a variety of different things. And so it's important to find what is going to be the areas that you need to focus on. What do you need to do to get YouTube done and then start to create the plan around that? So, so Gina, um, your, your thoughts about that before we get ready to close out? Yeah, yeah, I'd just like to make the distinction between being consistent in terms of, of your posting does not mean that you do the same sort of thing at the same sort of time in the same sort of way. Right, it right. just means that there is a presence yes, uh, on right. a consistent basis. And Absolutely. what I would say, I'm still in, and I think, I don't think it's going to change in the experimentation of, you know, will certain videos do better if I post them in, I'm in the UK, for example, do they do better if I post them in the morning in the UK, or do I get a better um, level of engagement if I post them morning time Pacific, for example? Mm -hmm. So different times of day, different types of video, and there is no one size fits all. And I think right. one of the things that I hope you'll have taken from this is you need to make something work for you, the way mm -hmm. you operate, the way you work, um, you know, how, when you're, you have the time and so on, but be very careful. I'm often say to people about the BS that we give ourselves. Don't yeah. make uh, the excuse. Well, I haven't got time and it can't do it because this is about get on with it, but at the right. same time, recognize that each of us has a very different way of working. I'm best when I have a period of time where I can focus on one thing. I'm not, I, I'm not at my most productive if I flit from one thing to another. Other people are really great at that and get bored if they do two or three hours with one particular thing. So you've got to know yourself and know what works for you. Mm-hmm. But the important thing is get it done and get it posted and get it out there. Because if you don't, it's sitting in your head. It's not doing any good for anybody. And you think of all of the people who the expertise, experience uh, and enthusiasms and passions that you have, how much you could help someone else. Just think okay. how often at the end of something, you look, if only I'd known. If only I'd known this, hindsight's wonderful, will be somebody else's hindsight. That's and in right. order to do that, get on with it. Exactly. Right, right. Yes, that was well stated. Yeah, definitely be the one or two steps ahead uh, expert for somebody else, um, because you can be sharing your journey as you're going along. So you don't have to wait to, well, I'm not a YouTube expert. Who am I to talk about doing this or however? No, just share it from the place, just like what Gina mentioned. Share it from where you are, what you learn, and be, yes, be the hindsight, you know, for, for others for sure. And uh, that's what, uh, whether experts or, or people who just love to share um, parts of their journey, that's what we're here to do, is to help you shorten learning curves, to be champions for you, so that it does make um, the process a little bit more simplified. And you can do it with more ease. You're going to have to put in the work, of course, but when you can cut out some of what someone else has done, um, they're, they're giving you a gift to get out ahead. So, you know, take advantage of that and, and get YouTube done. And as I always say, when you get YouTube done, uh, you're getting you done. Uh, for sure. And we have a variety of products um, that are in the description uh, and and also the site uh, for Get YouTube Done Now. Uh, it's hosted on uh, blogspot.com. So it's getyoutubedonenow.blogspot.com. And you'll find a, a variety of products there and um, also other uh, podcast playlist series that uh, we have and also uh, replays and reposts to this particular one as well. Also the opportunity to work with Gina and I on and off air uh, doing intensives and uh, so workspace sessions. And so we definitely uh, want to be able to help you uh, for sure. So Gina, I am going to turn it over to you. You always close us out so magnificently. And uh, thank you again, of course, for co-hosting with me. 
Thank you. Um, you know, every one of you that's watching this is watching this for a reason. And I suspect that you have so much to offer. And I would say to you, it's such a waste for you not to be sharing it. Think about all of the people that you can help. Think how it can help your business. Ultimately, unless people can see it, read it, feel it, it's not going to make that positive difference. Start small, but be brave mm. and get yourself into a place where you can get YouTube done. As I say, go and explore our sites, go and look at what we do, make a judgment of I like that, don't like the other, and make this your own. But whatever you do, it is time to get YouTube done. So thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye now.